right. Welcome to the workout. I'm so excited. We've got legs, shoulders, and abs today, a brand new workout. This is going to be a dumbbell and body weight only workout. Do make sure that you've got a series of dumbbells because we're going to be using them for bigger body movements like legs, but then we're also going to be needing some slightly lighter dumbbells for shoulders and other accessory work. We are going to be working in our supersets. If this is your first workout here, or if you're watching this in playback, please know that here's the deal. My workouts are different. I'm not just here to get your sweat on. I'm not here to just give you a tough workout. You can go find that from lots of other people in internet land. I'm here to help you use strength training to really transform your body and therefore transform your life. The key to strength training is that you've got to be overloading your current ability. The last two repetitions of every single exercise, of every single set should be challenging. And if it's not, you've got to get heavier weight loads. We are gonna be working with supersets. That means it's two exercises put back to back with no rest in between, short rest between that superset. We do two sets of each superset. And if you want to do a third, you can get out of head ahead of me and do more sets. And then we've got five total supersets for the whole workout today. If you wanna stick around after, we will be doing our walking lunge mini workshop. That only happens if you're here for the live workout. If you wanna join us for a live workout, me and my gang of what, we got 30 people here today or so, come to my website, hollyperkins.com forward slash free workout, and you can join us live and then you can partake in the walking lunge workshop. Super excited. So do make sure you've got some dumbbells and let's get it started. I've got everybody on mute so you can put some music on in the background if you want. That always makes things um, a little more fun. Make sure you've got some athletic shoes on, even if you're working out on carpet, have some water nearby. Let's get it started. Take a big inhale up. We're just going to go through a series of movements right now to get you prepared for the workout. So some might call this a warm up. I don't like to think of it as a warm up because last time I checked, you were already just under 100 degrees. And it's not that your body needs to warm up, it's that we need to get you prepared for the workout. Stay with your arms overhead and actively, I want you to reach up for the ceiling and hold for five seconds. Reach, reach, aggressively reach, five seconds. Relax it down and let's come into a spinal twist. Activate the glute on the leg that you're turning away from. Left glute, right glute. Squeeze the glute hard as you turn away. Squeeze it hard because what that does is that anchors your pelvis down so that you can more safely turn around the hips. Just bringing some really nice spinal rotation to release a little bit of stickiness get you open and limber and just feeling good for the workout. Let's just do one more here. Feet directly under your hips, arms over your head and actively reach. Active, active, active. Five seconds. Figure out your way of breathing. Short little breaths, but I want you to stretch yourself as tall as you possibly, possibly, possibly can. Relax it down. One more spinal twist and we'll do one more of that overhead reach. I love this move because it fires up your transverse abdominis, which is specifically the core muscle that is responsible for drawing your tummy inward, therefore really supporting your spine. And that transverse abdominis really only gets activated um, really when you do this exercise and then you learn to just naturally contract your belly inward. We also call that bracing. One more here and arms over your head and you just start kind of comfortably and go reach up as high as you possibly can if you feel a grabbing or a pulling in the middle of your back you're doing this correctly because that muscle influences your spinal erectors how your spine is supported and relax it down let's take your feet separated take a look down and you want your feet truly per uh, parallel to each other Toes are not open. Toes straight forward. Bend your knees. Hips back. And let's come side to side. Push your booty back. Take a couple kind of shallow because I want you to just begin to open up the adductors before we make this deeper and bigger. Hips back. And you're going to feel that awesome, awesome stretch in your inner thighs here. 
And then once you're kind of into the move, we can go deeper, sitting all the way down, reaching across your foot. Now remember in my workout, we've got a variety of fitness levels here. You can move faster than me if you want. You can move slower. You can take breaks whenever you want. You can do everything body weight, and you can also pick up some heavy dumbbells for today's workout. I designed this workout that way so that you are getting the perfect workout for your body. Hips back, heavy on your heels. Keep your chest up. Refine this movement. Get as much out of it as you possibly can, reaching that tailbone back. One more each side. And relax, bring your feet together. Let's come into our reverse reach, reverse lunge. We're gonna add that active reach that we just did a moment ago. And then you're gonna step back into a modified lunge, big reach, other leg. Now you can stay here with this sort of, let's call it partial reverse lunge, modified lunge, focusing on the front leg, and if this is good for you, stay here. If this is too easy, we're gonna make it bigger, coming all the way down to a reverse lunge, big reach. Reverse lunge, big reach. Move faster or slower based on where you are today. Big reach to draw that transverse abdominus inward. And even though you're stepping backward, you want to keep the mental focus on your front leg. More specifically, on your front heel. Drive into the heel, be heavy on the front heel, press into the front heel, but also let your back knee reach the ground so that we can start to get that front of the hip flexor opened up. One more each leg. And let's come to center. We're gonna do our functional balance exercise, feet together, bend your knees to lower your center of gravity and bring your weight onto one leg. It'll take about three to 10 seconds for your body to really truly kind of find your balance. Okay, so I want you to find that balance and then once you do, I want you to look around your space while you attempt to counterbalance holding your balance. Please continue. Let me check something on my camera here. Okay, yeah, we're good. I to make sure my proper camera was on. So your job is to intentionally throw your balance off by looking around so that your whole functional balance system has to adapt here. One of the best exercises you could possibly add to your weekly strength training repertoire. So important. It's so good as a strengthening exercise, but it's also so good as a preparatory move and relax because it gets everything firing. Same thing on the other side. Bend your knees to lower your center of gravity. Find your balance first. Keeping your standing knee slightly bent. That's really important. If you have a hard time keeping your standing knee bent, that's because your hamstrings are weak and you're locking out to overuse your quads. You have to bend that knee to get the hamstring to grab. And that's super important. I made that mistake for years. Look around your space. Everything I teach in my community is the result of research and science, my 30 years of experience, and all the mistakes I made until I figured it out. Keep that knee bent, and if it's hard for you, that's your homework to work on. Look around your space, intentionally try to throw your balance off. I might make it look a little easy, I don't know, but normally this is actually quite hard, especially if you're moving your chin and your eyeballs to look around your space. The more you look around, the faster you move, the more it's gonna throw your center of balance off, and that's actually what we want. That's what's gonna get you where we want you, and all you gotta do is just tap down to regain your balance whenever you need to, and relax it out. One more move, take a big inhale up, 
bring your hands behind your head, extend your elbows back and open your chest. I just wanna open up your chest a little bit and the front of your shoulders because we are gonna be focusing on the shoulders today. I'm gonna to tell you a hot tip secret because you guys are my inner circle. You know how sometimes you move your shoulders around in certain movement patterns and they click or they crunch? That's because your shoulder, the ball and socket joint is not in the right place. And by opening the front of the chest and the shoulders, go ahead and relax down. You are resetting your shoulders into their proper position so that when we do shoulder exercises, the shoulder joint's not out of alignment and that's when you get the clicking and the popping. Okay, so opening up the chest and the shoulders really helps to get into the shoulders. Let's get into this workout. Let me show you the first two exercises. For those of you guys that wanna move faster, go for it. Your job is to count out 12 repetitions. Every exercise, each side, you're responsible for repetitions, not me. So make sure that you are counting 12 only. Last two repetitions have to be challenging. Otherwise, you're not gonna get better. First exercise, with or without, a dumbbell, partial Cossack squat. Toes wide, real wide, toes open, feet real wide. You're gonna sit down, you're gonna come over to one side with the heel up, and we're gonna go side to side, keeping your chest up. It's a partial Cossack squat, but make sure that you're keeping your chest lifted and your booty back, okay? Second exercise, you may need a heavier dumbbell or not. We've got upright row. Pausing at the top, if your dumbbells are not heavy, if they are heavy, eliminate that pause. All right, you guys ready? Let's get this started, hold on. It is a hot, humid June day in PA. Hey, you like my matchy-matchy? Cute little matchy-matchy outfit, right? Thank you, Amazon. I found some like incredible brands on Amazon that I'm obsessed with. Um, okay, let's do this partial Cossack squat, you ready? Toes are open, your body weight's on your heel. If you're using a weight load at your chest, listen up, sit. Come over to one side, toe is up because this helps you set the width. Push your booty back, here we go. Side to side, you gotta count 12 on each side. So it's 24 passes in general. Sit heavy, push your booty back, keep your chest up. I don't want you just to bend over. Keep your chest up. Listen, the more you keep your chest up, the more you really reach your hips back, you're gonna feel this a lot in the glutes, even though it is a full leg strengthening exercise, okay? Reach those hips back so that you really feel it a lot in the glutes, because that's gonna help you get into your hamstrings a bit better. 12 on each side, upright row is next lighter or heavier dumbbells depending on your ability dumbbells start in front of your thighs elbows high all right now even though you are bringing your elbows up and high i want you to try to keep your shoulder girdle low so shoulders stay down even though your elbows are coming up, okay? And now listen, if you're able to really fly through these exercises super fast, you probably need heavier dumbbells. Your dumbbell, your weight load should slow you down. It should slow you down, okay? Shoulders nice and high, chest reaches forward, 12 reps, let's take a short break. Short little break. And then we're gonna go into our second set, a couple of, of seconds to catch your breath. You may, you really should need a little bit of recovery. And if you don't feel you're needing at least 20 seconds of recovery, you probably need heavier dumbbells. It really is about getting more challenging weight loads. Even if you like the high heart rate, even if you like sweating, even if you like that type of a workout, we really, you really gotta be using the challenging weight loads, otherwise you're not gonna improve a whole lot. Okay, second set, Cossack squat. Okay, toes are open, dumbbell at your chest, sit over to one side to find your distance, and here we go. 12, really keep your chest up, really reach your hips back. 
Sit super deep with your booty, okay? Heavy on your heels. There is a bit of an up and a down a little, okay? You can shift side to side. Just make sure your all of your body weight is on the heels and you're really reaching your hips back and you're keeping your chest up, okay? 12 reps, going right into upright dumbbell row. Grab those heavier dumbbells. Here we go. Upright row. My goal for you is to be using at least eight pound dumbbells for this exercise, at least. And as time goes on, ideally I would have you at, at about 12 to 15 and then beyond that, depending on your goal. Elbows nice and high, keeping the shoulders down. Ooh, you feel that on those delts? So good. Ooh, this is gonna make your arms look incredible. Those of you that want that nice, rounded, full shoulder, great exercise, short break. Also gonna teach you a secret. If you want your arms to look nicer, your biceps and your arms, it's actually not about biceps and triceps. It's about getting your shoulders better. <laughs> the better you get your, your deltoids, the better your arms look. Nobody will tell you that out there in the fitness industry, but it's the truth. Okay, let me show you the next two exercises. You definitely need heavier dumbbells. If you have a barbell, grab it. So B stance. Um, hold on one second. Okay, B stance RDL. I, my notes are wrong. B stance RDL, here's what you're gonna do. So you've got your body weight on your front leg, okay? Front knee is bent. Back foot is just back towards your um, heel, maybe a little behind your heel. This back leg is just to support your balance. Front leg is doing all the work. Keep an arch in your lower back. I'm gonna actually do it this way so you can see me a little bit better. Front leg is doing the work, okay? A Little bit of a neutral arch in your back, come up. So it's an RDL, but on the front leg only. So we'll do 12, 12 on the other side, going into, Arnold Press. This superset works great with heavier dumbbells. These are both exercises that you really should be able to do with 8, 10, 12 pounds. Ready? Let's do it. So RDL, knees are bent. Uh, B stance, that toe comes back towards the heel. A little bit of an arch in your lower back. Coming forward, dumbbells to the front shin. Squeeze your glute. 12 reps here. Make sure that your hip is really moving back and forward, back and forward, okay? Keeping a bit of a neutral curvature on your lower back. You wanna keep a little bit of that natural curvature in your lower back. Make sure that you're really finishing off the move here at the top, 12 reps. Squeeze your glute at the top here, and 12 reps on the other leg. Same thing, okay? Front knee bent, back toe near the heel, bend that front leg, coming forward, squeeze the glute. So I want you to really squeeze your glute at the top for two reasons. It opens the hip and improves the flexibility of the hip flexor. That's number one. We gotta open up that hip flexor in a very, uh, dynamic and active way. That's really what works best on hip flexors, okay? Second reason is you wanna fully squeeze the glute at the top. And to really get into a full glute contraction, the hip has to be in full extension here. So I will often look like I'm really pushing my hips forward. Um, and that's just because from my anatomy, that's the best way for me to really get in, squeeze my glute. You might not need to push your hips forward as much as I do. Arnold press, palms are facing you in the bottom position. Rotate palms face away, 12 reps. At the bottom, you're not releasing all the way down to here. Keep tension on the muscle before you bring it back up. One of my favorite moves that hits the deltoids, but also the anterior deltoid, front deltoid, which is that really beautiful part of your front shoulder 
that makes the arms look extra nice. Once again, as I was saying, if you want your arms to look nice, focus on your shoulders. Makes a big difference. Big reach, 12 reps. You should be at at least eight pounds here. Eight pounds or more. And if you're not, that's okay. I'm not judging you. Don't feel bad. It's not that. Your job is over the coming weeks and months, I want you to try to hit these minimum weight loads that I'm mentioning. So if I say eight pounds and you're not there yet, you know that's your homework going forward, okay? In the coming months, your first milestone is to get your weight loads up to that minimum. I promise you it's gonna change your life. Muscle will save the world, not love, muscle. <laughs> Okay, second set, B stance, RDL. Ready? If that first one was easy, let's go a little heavier. If you do have a barbell at home, please use it. It's, a, it's great for this exercise. Hips back, squeeze the glute. Count your reps. Hips, squeeze. This really is a hip back, hip forward. Hip back, hip forward. This is not a bend over, okay? And you might say, Bahali, you're bending over. I'm talking about the initiation and the focus in your head. Hip back, hip forward is your focus of attention. Because if you're thinking about bending over, you're either gonna strain your lower back or you're just not gonna get the value of this exercise. And when you don't get the value, your body doesn't change. I'm here to help you change your body, make it better. Not that there's anything wrong with it now, but just to make it better so you feel better. Same on the other side. Both knees bent, hips back, hips forward. I also love this exercise because it helps to improve hamstring flexibility. So if you're like, oh, I need to do more stretching because my hamstrings are tight. You know, my doctor or my so-and-so told me that my hamstrings are tight. One of the most ineffective ways to stretch your hamstrings is just to stretch your hamstrings. I've never seen it work for anyone except dancers because they do it for hours and hours and hours and hours and hours every day. This is one of the best ways to improve hamstring flexibility right here. 12 reps going into dumbbell upright row. One more and dumbbell upright row. Here we go. Listen up, shoulders down. Shoulder girdle towards your hips, even though elbows come up. That's a bit of an art. I think we're doing an Arnold, Arnold press, right? Press. Yeah. Oh, sorry, guys. Yes, thank you, thank you, thank you, Gina. Arnold press, Arnold press. The same as I was saying still applies here. Okay, so shoulders down, even though you're bringing your arms up, it applies for both of the exercises. So that art is when you're pushing up over the head you're still anchoring your shoulder girdle down towards your hips because a lot of people want to really reach the shoulders up at the top keep your shoulders down arm press second set good press two more for 12 and we take a short break i'll show you the next two exercises again two more exercises the first one really does demand a heavier weight load. Grab the heaviest dumbbell or kettlebell you have. We've got goblet squat. Second exercise is a bent over rear fly, reverse delt, goblet squat, sitting down. Hips are lower than your knees at the bottom. Squeeze your glutes, open your hips at the top. Okay, important to get your hips below your knees at the bottom. Second exercise for your bent over rear fly, reverse delt, you do need a slightly lighter dumbbell here. Feet together, knees bent, bring your elbow, uh, sorry, bring your dumbbells right in front of your knees, shoulders back and down, and you're coming out to the sides. Four, reverse fly, rear delt, and this exercise, five pounds or less for most people, unless you're more advanced. Goblet squat, grab your heaviest dumbbell you have, ideally it's 10, 15, 20, 30, 40, 50, toes are open, body weight on the heel, chest is up. Feet are not super wide. Feet are not super wide, okay? That's actually a mistake I see a lot of my clients make is they take their goblet squat super duper wide 
when it actually doesn't need to be. You wanna just be able to naturally sit straight down and stand up and squeeze the glutes straight down, keeping your chest up and keeping your hips down. So at the bottom, if you've got a mirror at the bottom and you're looking at yourself straight on in the mirror, you wanna see your hips are below your knees. Squeeze your glutes at the top, 12. Really squeeze those glutes. Two more. And let's go into that bent, slightly bent, rear delt reverse fly. I'm gonna demonstrate a couple, and I wanna make an adjustment on my computer because I'm sure that autofocus is driving you nuts. Knees bent, dumbbells in front of your knees, chest is open, coming into a reverse fly for the rear delt. Five pounds or less for most people. Bear with me because my autofocus is driving me nuts. I don't know if it's driving you guys nuts. It's driving me nuts. We might have some camera issues, hopefully not. Good, no. Okay, if I have any tech issues, this is always a gamble, but it might happen. All right, hopefully that's gonna fix things. And of course it did change things. Take a short break when you're ready. There we go. And then we will go back in for that second set. Oh, better, better. That goblet squat, my autofocus was probably killing you guys on that goblet squat because it was refocusing every time I stood up. Short break and we'll go into our second set. If that first set felt comfortable and doable, grab yourself a heavier dumbbell if you can. If you don't have a heavier dumbbell, it's time to go shopping and find yourself some heavier weight loads. Second set, goblet squat, let's go. Toes open, feet not as wide as you think they need to be, but you do want your toes open. If you would imagine standing on top of a clock face and you look down at it, your left foot is pointing to 10 a.m. and your right toe is pointing to 2 p.m. for a goblet squat. Most other exercises, it's 11 and one, but for goblet squat, it's 10 and two. Plie squat, it's like 9.30 and 2.30. Chest up, squeeze your glutes. And again, remember, in a perfect world, your weight load would be so heavy that it slows you down, that you can't move quickly through this. One more, second set, bent over, rear fly. Knees bent, hips back, slight bend in your lower back, dumbbells in front of your knees, shoulders back and down, pausing a tiny bit at the top if your dumbbells are very manageable. If your dumbbells are heavier, a little maybe even challenging as they should be, you won't have that pause at the top. You'll just get in and out, okay? Tummy super tight. Chest is up. You should feel a little pressure in your lower back due to the arch, just a little. This is a tricky subject because everyone has a slightly different personality in their lower back. And this is when it's really important for you to use a mirror checking your body alignment or even videotape yourself from the side so that you can start to learn your natural curvature, okay? We don't want a flat lower back, but we also don't want a super, super duper arched lower back either. Just a little bit. Okay, second, next exercise. Light to medium dumbbell. You need one dumbbell for both of these exercises. Overhead split squat with a hold. So knees are bent. You're gonna step back into your split position. We are doing split squat with the dumbbell over the head. If you want more of a challenge, you take the dumbbell into one hand. It's the same hand as the leg that's behind you. Second exercise, we're down on the ground for an ab exercise. Keeping that moderate dumbbell, knees are bent, dumbbell over your head, and you are using your abdomen to lift you up, bringing your dumbbell 
to the top of your knees so that your torso ends at about a 45 degree angle. Oh my God, I am so sore. You guys, I did a bunch of ab exercises. Oh my God, I am so sore. This is gonna be a tough one for me. Are you ready? Split squat, overhead hold. Grab the dumbbell that's right for you. One hand or two hands, feet together. Knees bent, option number one. Two hand hold. Come back into your split squat start. Both knees are slightly bent. It's not a super wide front to back position straight down and straight up. And if you prefer, you can do one hand over the head, whichever feels more productive for you today. One's probably gonna feel harder than the other. One's probably gonna feel a little bit more natural. And it's really up to you in terms of what feels right for you today, okay? Sometimes you want the harder movement. Sometimes the harder movement just feels really awkward. Nice and tall. 12 reps, staying on that back toe. And then we'll immediately go into the 12 reps on the other leg as well, okay? And same thing on that other side. Either two hands up, one hand up. Really depends on your body, your ability, and the nature of the challenge that you want today. Straight down, drive into that heel. Super tall. Drive into that front heel. Squeeze the glute of that leg that's bent in the back. Really squeeze that glute, especially at the top. Squeeze that glute, okay? Press into the front heel. One more. We're going down on the ground for 45 degree ab. Those of you guys that have either worked with me privately, or are in the comeback or any of my other programs you might be familiar with this exercise because this is definitely one of my favorites one of my go-to's dumbbell is over your head and even though we are coming up to bring the dumbbell to your knees you're not throwing your arms up you're doing it with your abs so use the strength of the core to bring you up to this top position dumbbell comes to the top of the knees maybe slightly in front of the knees depending on your anatomy if you have longer arms that dumbbell is probably going to end about two inches in front of your knees if you've got long legs your dumbbell is probably going to end at the tip top of your knees here and if you have a short torso you might even end with the dumbbell just in front of the knees okay that's the thing a lot of people don't understand about the technical aspect of strength training um, is we got 12 reps here, okay? And relax, short break. I'll continue my sentence in a moment. From here, I want you to come over, come into our crouched position. Let's work on foot health before you stand. If you are out ahead of me or moving faster, please don't jump up off the ground and go right into your next exercise. Take a moment to transition. It doesn't need to be this, you could stand up more slowly, but I do just want you to take a bit of a transition before you go from the floor to standing. Um, and if you need the foot arch and toe work, this is a great time to practice. From here, I'm gonna have you stand up as soon as you get there, lift your knees 10 times. So what I was saying is in terms of strength training technique, the one thing that often gets overlooked is your anatomy, whether you have long arms, short arms, long legs, high hips, short torso, long torso, your height in general, all of these things really do influence the nuances of your strength training exercises. So there isn't a one size fits all. There are little nuances. There are some broad strokes, important things to remember, but, a lot of it is really coming to learn your body and things like where to place the dumbbell around the lever. Here we go, second set, dumbbell up over your head, 12 reps each leg. Let's do it straight down, drive into that front heel. So a lot of people get confused on this exercise and they put entirely too much body weight on the back leg. You really want to put everything on your front leg, and that's why you, you can't have too wide of a stance front to back. So 
especially at the bottom. You should be very aware of the pressure on the front heel. Nothing on the toe, especially at the bottom. Front toes should be relaxed or even lifted throughout the movement. Drive into that front heel, squeeze your glute on the back leg at the top, 12 reps. And same thing, other side. Take your time to set it up. Setting up your split squat, super important. You do want space from left to right, okay? Width-wise, between your right foot and your left foot so that your feet are not straight in front of each other. Nice and heavy on that front heel. Squeeze the glute at the top. If you have toe issues, and this is hard on that back foot, it's actually important for you to practice this exercise in some kind of supported way, easing some of that pressure on the back toes. A healthy functional body needs to be able to do this movement, okay? And if you can't, that's not because you have arthritis in your toes. It's because you haven't been doing this. You have arthritis in your toes. So learning this motion so that all of your joints wake up and open up to it is super important. 45 degree ab. If your dumbbell is not heavy enough and your 12 reps are too easy, you can do more. And I do want this to be challenging. So 12 reps should be challenging. And for this exercise, that probably means you've got to get a little heavier dumbbell. Exhaling as you come up. If you have a hard time doing this because your feet want to lift off the floor, move your heels a little farther away from your hips. You could also anchor your toes under something, your couch if you want. That's doable and that's a good way to learn this exercise. But eventually, I do want you to be able to do this without having to anchor your feet. That's an incredible test of your core ability to be able to do this without the feet lifting up off the ground. So if your feet lift up, lift up off the ground, that's your homework going forward is to practice this. So the strength of your abs lift you up, but your heels almost stay glued to the floor because your abs are able to counterbalance and do the work. Short break, just don't jump up too quickly. Take a transition. Even if you just wanna to come to a crouch position and rest for a couple of seconds, take a couple of seconds before you stand up. When you stand up, do make sure that you lift your knees several times. And if you do have foot and toe issues, you can do that foot flexion exercise that I absolutely love. It makes a huge difference. I am walking, talking proof that if you have arthritis in your toes and painful toes, you can fix it, okay? Short break, let me show you our last two exercises. Our last superset is down on the ground. You need a heavier dumbbell. Second exercise, no weight load. First exercise is a glute bridge with a leg extension. Second exercise is a plank variation. Let me show you. First exercise, I want you to use a challenging dumbbell. You can do this without a dumbbell, but for those of you guys that are a bit more advanced, or if you are doing the glutes project or inside of the glutes project, you really should be able to do this with a dumbbell. So from here, you're gonna power into one leg and you're gonna extend the other leg. And we're just gonna alternate side to side, power into one leg and extend the opposite leg. If this is too much for you, if you get too much pressure in your lower back, just get rid of that dumbbell, elbows at 90 degree, same movement without the dumbbell if you need to. Second exercise is an elbow plank. Make a fist with your hands. Elbows are directly under your shoulders. You're gonna come into a plank with your feet next to each other, really close, and we're gonna swap legs, okay? So we're alternating both exercises, both positions, 12 repetitions on each leg. Come on down for your glute bridge. And again, if you're not skilled enough or strong enough with your glute bridge, elbows at 90 degrees by your hips or rib cage, bring yourself into a bridge extension and you can do it from here. 12 reps each side. 
if this is comfortable and doable, or if you are in the glutes project, you really should be able to do this with a dumbbell. No judgments depending on wherever you are. It doesn't matter, but I do want you to. I want your goal ultimately to be to hit some of these goals and minimums that I'm mentioning, okay? Because I know if you can hit these, you're going to feel a whole lot better. And oh, by the way, it's so normal to be like, oh, I can't do that. There's something wrong with me. And that's actually not true. Everything with your physical body is just a function of strategy and consistency and what we call specificity, exposing your body to these abilities, you will get better through the process of overload. Elbow plank, hands in a fist, elbows under your shoulders, stepping back into a plank. You can also just hold your plank here if you want. If this is challenging for you, just hold your plank. If this is not challenging, we're going to come into alternating leg lift. 12 on each leg, so you got 24 in total. Make sure that your hips are not coming up too high. When you switch your toes, hips probably are gonna come up a little bit when you switch your toes, but just make sure when you come back into that plank, you're dropping back into your hips here, okay? Switching, you gotta kinda lift your hips because you gotta get your toes under you, but then you just wanna drop those hips into a nice, straight plank. This is actually not a leg lift glute squeeze, even though you can squeeze, squeeze your glutes. This is actually more about the leg that stays on the ground, pressurizing and keeping that leg on the ground so that you're loading that side of your torso. So you want to think about putting your energy into the leg that's on the ground. Don't be thinking about leg lift, leg lift, leg lift. You want to think about anchor the leg on the ground, press into the leg on the ground, anchor the leg on the ground. Okay. Short break, second set. If either one of those was easy, let's make it harder somehow. If your bridge extension was easy, add a dumbbell, three pounds, five pounds, 10 pound weight plate. Whatever feels right for your ability today. And let's go for that second set. Dumbbell or not, no judgments. Heels are about the width of your shoulders and then your toes are turned open slightly. I know when we talk about bridges out there in internet land, other experts will tell you your feet should be parallel. I personally believe your feet should be slightly turned open, mostly because you are a woman and women have opened hips. So because our hip structure is inherently already turned open, you want your toes to be opened because that unlocks all of the mus musculature from your ankle all the way up to really up to your rib cage. The glutes do have a turned openness. To really activate and squeeze the glutes, the toe has to be slightly opened a slight external rotation on the hip. And that external rotation on the hip is often related to external rotation at the foot so that you get hamstrings and all of those accessory muscles to cooperate. 12 on each side, flipping over for that plank. 12 on each side, or if on your plank, you don't wanna alternate, you can just hold a plank and count to 30 or count to 40 or count to 20, take a break and do another 20. Really depends on where you are today, where your energy is and where your fitness level is today. Elbows are under the shoulders, stepping back into your plank, feet together. And then depending on, you can hold if you want or lift the toe and switch. You just wanna have about a beat pause so that the leg that's on the ground can get loaded by the body weight. So you really settle into that leg that stays on the ground. You power into it. That is what really fires up the core. 
great core exercise. So good for your back, provided you've got pretty good technique here. Settling into that leg for a moment. Twelve on each side. And when you're done, you're going to bring your knees under you. And I'm going to have you sit back onto your feet. We're going to do a little foot health work before we do a bit more of a cool down. And then if you are here with me live, we're going to do some walking lunges. And if you're not here with me live, join us next time live and you can do walking lunges with us. So I just want you to sit on your feet with your toes pointed feet together. If this is hard for you, if this is uncomfortable in any way, that is a massive red flag that you need to work on this, okay? For knee health, for foot health, really and truly, I fought this in my 20s. When everybody was telling me I needed to be able to do this, I was like, I can't do this. My body won't do this. I mean, I legitimately believed that my body couldn't do this in my 20s. And I could sit here all day. If you are able to work on this, it's really going to improve the health of your knees, your lower leg, your hips, your lower back. It's critical. Bring your toes under and let's come into that crouched position, rocking back and forth. If this is easy for you, then I want you to bring your knees down, really tuck those toes under and sit back on those feet. I want you to get that forefoot flexion to the degree where it's uncomfortable. Really get into that forefoot flexion. The more mobility you have at your toes, the healthier you are. The more restriction you have, the more concerned we are. And admittedly, I've got very restricted forefeet, and it's something that I'm always working on, and it's related to the weakness of my glutes. Even being the creator of the glutes project, my glutes are still too weak, and that translates down to the feet. You can rock back and forth, or you can sit. From here, I want you to shift back so that you're in a crouched position, and then come up, lift the knees, walk about, grab a drink of water, a couple of stretches, and then we are going to wrap it up. Find something to stabilize you if you need to. We're going to do quad stretch. So if you're not great with your balance, just find something to stabilize you. And you're going to bring your leg up back behind you and grab the shoelace. Or if you need to grab your heel, your pant leg, or grab a belt, you can do that. But I want you to come into quad stretch and tuck your pelvis under, pull your knee back. Tuck your pelvis under, pull your knee back. You want your pelvis to be nice and straight. If you're stretching from here, you're not gonna get an appropriate quad stretch. You need your glute to be contracted, the hip to be fully opened, so that you get the origin of glutes, which is all the way up above the hip joint. It's where your glutes actually start, up above the hip. Some of your glute muscles, not all of them, but. I'm sorry, quad, sorry guys. Sorry, 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 quads, 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 quads and relax switch sides same on the other bring that heel up grab the toe pelvis tucks under by squeezing your glutes okay so the glutes squeeze but it's so we can get that pelvis straight to get quadricep stretch okay front of the thighs quadriceps start up above the hip and come down below the knee squeeze that glute Get a really good stretch, such an important stretch for every single woman, every single woman, every single one of you. And relax, big inhale up, exhale it out, bring your hands back behind your head and let's do that stretch that we did at the beginning. Hands behind your head, squeeze your elbows back, stick your chest forward. You should feel some activation and some pressure at the base of your shoulder blades. And hopefully you feel a stretch through your chest as well. Really think about pushing your chest forward. And if you get a little overarch in your lower back, it's okay because this is a stretch. And relax it out. Thank you so much for joining me for the workout. I will see you next time. And if you want to stick around for walking lunge workshop, join me live. Okay. Stop recording. Where is the record?